Welcome to Strange Familiars. If you've seen something strange, something paranormal, and you want to share your story with us, or if you know of a story you think we should be covering, you can email us, strangefamiliarspodcast at gmail.com. Well, tonight we have a pretty cool set of stories from Keith. He starts off talking about his father's Bigfoot encounter and a trackway find of his own that he found near a reservoir. Then he gets into some sleep paralysis stuff, shadow people and really really interesting story of a green glowing moth which actually flew into his chest he said during a sleep paralysis incident black dog other things his girlfriend and his brother have seen when sleeping in the same room where he had his experiences really really interesting stuff if you're playing strange familiars bingo i believe you have bingo (laughs) (laughs) and then he tells a story that happened on white rocks trail which is the first place i met mr chad Ah. That's where Chad got roared at by something. And Keith tells of a story of going hiking up there and getting screamed at by something. He sounded like it was a woman screaming. Oh. So very, very interesting. So another reason for me to not ever go to White Rocks Trail. <laughs> <laughs> so now I have two separate close personal incidences. Of... Well, there's also copperheads and rattlesnakes, so oh, okay. you might have more than a couple of reasons. You know, it was a really great conversation with Keith, so let's get to it. Tonight we're talking with Keith, who has some incidents of strangeness he'd like to talk about with us, including one that happened on White Rocks Trail, which you've heard Chad and I uh, visit a couple times here. How are you doing tonight, Keith? I'm doing well, thanks. Do all these events happen in the same general geographic area? Yes and no. I had a lot of stuff happen. A lot of stuff happened where I grew up at, which is about an hour north of where I'm at right now. And mm-hmm. I have a lot of stuff that's happened up north where my family actually has a camp in okay. uh, Allegheny, Allegheny National Forest. Just generally speaking, this is in the western part of Pennsylvania, these stories. are. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, there's some other things that happen in Montana, some little things here and there, but like, yeah, it's generally in western Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. What's the first thing you want to talk about? Do, do you want to go chronologically as best you can? Yeah, I think, I think I'm going to talk about my uh, my dad's, Supposed Bigfoot encounter. Okay, awesome. Which uh, I've been trying to bug him to ask, like bug him about when it exactly happened, but he doesn't quite remember. But I think it happened late seventies, early eighties. That's my best guess. Mm-hmm. So that was before I was born. So, but uh, basically, with that, he was rabbit hunting at my grandmother's, not her property, but the property across from her house, which is I don't know sure who owns it, but. It's just a, a nice wooded area, and people used to ride their dirt bikes and stuff back there. But uh, it was getting dark out. He had no flashlight. He figured, I'm gonna, I am need to get back. It's, he's on a trail that he knows really, really well. And uh, on his way back, he stops all of a sudden, and he sees what he thinks is a figure on the trail. So this, he estimates it's probably about 10 feet away from him. And at this point, he thinks that this thing's about six foot tall, maybe, maybe a little taller, but it was dark. He couldn't really tell. It was kind of around like twilight but a little darker than that and the dog was the the giveaway the dog started freaking out and the dog is you know it's a it's a well-trained dog it's been rabbit hunting for a long time and uh yeah so the dog's hiding behind him and he doesn't know what's going on he doesn't know what it is i think he thinks it was a neighbor or somebody who was just happened to be there mm-hmm. but no one no one actually stopped and like say anything i mean it was standing there, didn't move, didn't smell anything, no one said anything. But the, the fact that the dog was freaking out behind him, it was, it was cowering behind him, then he was freaked out too. So he started moving around it in a semicircle and the whole time just watching this thing and just he just had a bad feeling, you know? And, and he said this thing, it, it never moved, it never made a sound, but he could tell it was an outline of something, something big. And I asked him, I said, well, like how big do you think it was? And he, 
he said from shoulder width was probably three to four feet. Wow. Which is obviously, obviously not a neighbor, you know what I mean? Unless it was somebody in a big jacket, but even then, I, I don't yeah. think there's any way, you know? Yeah, that's, that's a big man. Yeah. The thing that's crazy to me about this is it happened near a, a, like a, a dam, Beaver Run Dam, actually which is a reservoir that supplies drinking water to like the entire area. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, it's a popular spot there, but used to go fishing, but you weren't a lot of fish, but you can go there and you know, they'll go there at night and fish and, you know, people get ran out all the time at water company, but it happened near there. And I read a bunch of Stan Gordon's books and those kinds of types of areas were really big hotspots back in the day. And that's why I wish I'd known exactly what time this happened in the right. seventies or eighties, but he just, he doesn't really know. So I, I can't really correlate it with other sightings in the general area. Because there was a lot of sightings in that area, in that right. like in the specific town that this happened in, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, well, Stan writes about the big flap in seventy three and seventy four mostly, yeah. but there mm-hmm. was uh, seventy eight was a big year too across the state. Oh, really? I didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, seventy eight was was real big. Nice. Where I grew up at, this only happened about like four miles away, probably, and mm-hmm. other incidents happened in the same town that I read in, in his books and which I thought was pretty interesting because yeah, a lot of weird things happened there. Even where I grew up at, not even a mile over down the road, I lived by, I also lived by a reservoir and there was also kind of some weird things going on there. A lot of weird sightings of weird things. Um, Bigfoot, Bigfoot sightings uh, across a specific road and like a UFO sighting, all kinds of weird things. So I thought that was pretty interesting too. I don't know if it was, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if that has any correlation with the thing that happened four miles away from there, but I think it's pretty interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it certainly is. Yeah, but as far as that sighting my dad had, he he didn't say he didn't have specifics about the face or anything like that because it was it was just so dark. He just saw like a silhouette type figure, you know. Right. And, and he he's hunted that trail for years, and he knows every inch of the trail, even at dark. He he knew that something shouldn't have been there because he just walked through it maybe two hours before that. So. Yeah, but he said he himself uh, as well as the dog just got a bad feeling. Yeah, yeah, and, and the dog the dog was between his legs the whole time and he said that that was very strange to his dog because he did i mean it was my uh my grandfather's dog which would have been his father-in-law and yeah he he knew that this dog was it was seeing something that it didn't like you know right yeah yeah well i mean that but, I mean, boxes with other sightings you know it's not like my dad my dad never really came out and said it was bigfoot because like he grew up in his woods he was you know he was walking his trap line before he went to school every day so right. he was he never saw anything like that so he's not he didn't assume it was a Bigfoot thing, you know, but he saw, said it was something he couldn't explain, you know, and it freaked him out. It freaked the dog out. And, and, and what I grew up in that area, I mean, I grew up walking up in those woods and I never saw it like that, but I always heard stories. My grandma was telling me, you know, don't go up there. There's gypsies. There's people that will take you, you know, mm-hmm. and I always thought that was interesting because I, I liked exploring and I went there all the time, but I never went past a certain spot. It was always just one spot we stopped at. My, my brother and I were like, yeah, this, this is just too weird, you know? I never saw anything up there, but I think there was some weird things going on back there for sure. Cause it was a big patch of wood too. Right. Yeah. Well, what are some of your experiences you can tell us about? Uh, I found some, uh, found some trackways before. Oh, did you? Yeah. I found a trackway in the Allegheny National Forest. And, uh, actually I have it on video. I looked up the video today and it was back in 2015 and it was in, let's see, October. So it was pretty cold out. It was, 40 at night, you know, like kind of the weather's getting crappy. It's starting to rain here and there, you know, and the reservoir, uh, we were at the Kansu Dam Reservoir, so it was getting really, really low. I mean, the water level's low that time of year. So uh, my brother and I hike in. I have a twin brother, and we do a lot of backpacking and camping and stuff like that, just as a uh, backstory. So mm-hmm. we're, used to, we're used to exploring the woods and being, you know, being together camping all the time. So uh, we're, we're, we always film our little adventures, you know, we're uh we're walking in, we we get to the reservoir and we see it's super low and we're like oh, that's cool let's let's walk over there see if we can find tracks and we see bear tracks and deer tracks and you know dead fish you know skeletons everything everywhere and then we see these uh this, these footprints we're like you know the boat the little cove we were in it's too shallow for boats to get in and out there this time of year so we're like well why would people be docking their boat and walking around in this mud you know right. especially when it's 40 degrees out or whatever you know and it's october and there's no one out there uh, in the boats except people fishing for like muskie and um you know uh, fish like that like cold water fish so we started seeing these tracks and we started following these tracks and we noticed that there's a couple of different tracks 
couple different size tracks, but nothing is bigger than maybe a size 12 or 13 shoe because we I think we had size 12 boots at the time, mm-hmm. and nothing was bigger than that. But the fact that they were four plus feet long and in, in, in like a stride, right. and the stride seemed like it was walking; it wasn't running because if you're running in mud, you're gonna slide. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And these were not sliding; these were like something was walking, but the strides were, were bigger than I can stride, you know, and they, they probably weren't more than a few days old from what we saw and, and what we filmed. Like they looked pretty fresh. About how far did they go? The trackway or did you not follow it? So, uh, we, yeah, we followed the whole way cause they, they followed a uh, deer track. It was like a, like a, like a small young deer. They were following the track and they started from the shore and they kind of, they kind of circled into the, in, like into the uh, mud and they went back onto the shore again. So it was probably like a hundred yard arc. Mm-hmm. I was about hundred yards total. So yeah, so it went out, it went out like the water was really low and you know, it goes out like 50 yards or, or something. So it probably arced out 50, 50 yards in and it walked about hundred yards total, I imagine. Mm-hmm. So then it went back in the woods. So like we couldn't see any tracks once it got back on shore on like dry land because like right. there was no more mud. So we couldn't follow the track, but it, it was strange that it was following a deer trail the whole time, which I thought that was pretty strange. Yeah. That's really interesting. Could you ever see toes or anything no. in them? Or yes, yeah, so, so you could see all the toes, and some of them looked normal, like normal toe toes, but other ones looked strange. Like the you'd have a, a digit that was off to the left more than a normal toe, or you know, what I mean, it, some of the some of the tracks looked like they were flat. Other ones looked like they had a, like a hill, like a human. So yeah. that that was confusing us because like I know that we had, you know we have arch on our foot, and then other ones didn't have an arch. You can tell it was just a flat footprint. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. It, it was just the whole the whole situation was pretty strange. We we did film it and we have it on video, but I I, I wish I can go back and yeah, I would have spent more time there, you know. Oh sure, yeah. We'll be back to our interview with Keith in just a moment. What a great time to be taking classes, and Skillshare is an online learning community. They have thousands of classes, classes that inspire you, explore new skills, and help you find new passions and get lost in your creativity. You took the Design Great Stuff, How to Make Merch with Draplin class? I did. I think it's great because he uh, talked about really practical advertising campaigns that you can adapt in a more interesting way. Sort of using things that are commonly available. Yeah. Yeah. And not spending like an, a huge abundance of time sourcing things. I was looking at the filmmaking from home turnaround found footage into a compelling video by Penny Lane. And I think we're both interested. In the perfect grilled cheese. <laughs> <laughs> the perfect grilled cheese, a mini class to master the sandwich by Elena Karp. I would like to do extra credit. <laughs> Skillshare has classes to fit your schedule and your skill level, whatever that is. They're incredibly affordable especially when you compare them to in-person classes and workshops, which can be very, very pricey. An annual subscription to Skillshare is less than $10 a month. So if you take 10 classes a month, which you could easily do, it's like a dollar a class. Absolutely. So you can explore your creativity and get two free months of premium membership at Skillshare.com strange. That's two months of unlimited access to thousands of classes for free. You can get started and join today. Head over to Skillshare.com slash strange. That's two free months of unlimited access to thousands of classes at Skillshare.com slash strange. So do you want to talk about this sleep paralysis incident? When I originally contacted you, I had one story of sleep paralysis, but I had another one too that was in the same area I'm talking about right now, but I'll go back to the first one I had. So the first one I mentioned was like a, like a green moth and uh, the monk with the green mist. Right. Um, it kind of reminded me of that story because mine, I was, uh, I was laying there and all of a sudden I see something in the corner of this room, and, which was very common in this room I, like I, when I grew up in because I would always see shadow figures going across this one corner all the time. And I never really thought anything of it. I was like, ah, maybe it's just like a car light or something passing the road. But this night I specifically remember something coming out of the corner of the room. And 
and I'm froze. I'm, I'm, I'm froze. And I'm like, what is this? And all of a sudden it turns into like this green, green, like glowing moth. And when I went to like, like a moth, it, I don't know if it was more like a butterfly or moth, but it reminded me of like a moth. It was like, it was, it was glowing. And then it came towards me and I'm like screaming my brother's name. Um, and he's in a bedroom next to me and I'm screaming his name and I'm like, how can you not hear me? How can you not hear me? And I can't move, you know? And this thing just comes, it comes down and flies in my chest. And I remember going in my chest and I was just freaking out. I don't know what's going on. And I don't know, I don't know how long after it was that I like finally could move, but this was like a really traumatizing thing. And, and I remember like getting up and going in my brother's room. I'm like, did you not hear me screaming? Like, did you not hear me, Kevin? And he's, and he doesn't, he's like, no, I didn't hear anything. Huh. So I, I don't know, what, I don't know what to think about that. Right. Well, I mean, I've certainly experienced something very similar to that. As far as the screaming goes, like I was screaming at the top of my lungs in a house full of people and nobody yeah. heard me. The moth is really yeah, interesting though. Like, yeah, what, what exactly is it with a moth like, but why a moth? Like that's, that's what confuses me. I don't know why it was a moth. Hmm. Like it, it, cause it, 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 it was a moth. That's what it looked like a moth. And I don't know why. I don't know what that symbolizes, you know? Well, I mean, if you're looking for moth symbolism, there's there's no end to it from, uh, you know, being a, a night creature to, uh, you know, a caterpillar rebirth kind of thing. I'm sure there's a million yeah. other if you if you just but uh, it's, it's more of a question of what did it mean to you, I guess, or what could it have meant to you? Um, unless it's truly something other, in which case, you know, who knows why it took that form. Yeah. Do you remember any details about the moth other than it being green? Uh yeah, so I would say if if I had it in front of my face and, and it, I would say maybe an inch and a half across, it, it wasn't very big. It wasn't like a huge thing. It was, mm-hmm. it, was it was small, but when it, it came from the corner of the room and it came towards me, but it didn't go in a straight line, kind of kind of stopped and zigzagged, and it, it, it was kind of fl- almost like something was flying. But it wasn't. Yeah, like I said, it wasn't very big. Then when and when it went into my chest, what I but I thought I did. I mean, I'm pretty sure it went into my chest and then it just disappeared. And I guess a few minutes later, whatever, that's when I realized that, you know, I can move. And, and I was like, what, you know, that was the first experience I've ever had with that. So I didn't know what to think, you know? Right. Yeah. Now was it kind of a glowing like, green? I, I, uh, like a glowing green. Yeah. Like a glowing green, but it wasn't like a bright, a brightness around it. It was just that general area of like, maybe, you know, right around this thing was glowing. It wasn't like the whole room was glowing green. Mm-hmm. So like, as it was, flying or whatever this this little thing was green but it wasn't like a wasn't like glowing the room up you know what i mean right right you could see it but it wasn't like illuminating anything else yeah exactly and did you feel anything when it went inside you no i mean i didn't feel anything it it went inside me and i was still screaming so i mean maybe i thought it was gonna, it was gonna hurt me or something but when it went inside me i i just i was still yelling and then once i once i can move i that's when i got up and like I went in my brother's room and I was like, Hey, you know, like, did you hear me yelling? And he, he's like, no, I had no idea. So <laughs> I don't so, know to think about that. It's weird. Yeah. Well, at what point did you, like, do you remember waking up then? Or did you just go right from seeing this thing to, you know, when you could move standing up and going into your brother's room? Cause that's the thing. Like, I, I don't know if I, I don't know if I, and like I woke up and then I did that or it just happened. And then I was laying there and got up. Right. I don't know. Yeah, I mean that's that's the thing that's the confused. I don't know, like it's the whole sleep paralysis thing. Like I don't know how it exactly works. You know, mm-hmm. like I, I I just remember it was like it was a few minutes or something went by, and then and then I just went up and and I got up. So I don't know. I don't know if I woke up or I was already up. I don't know. You know. Yeah. yeah. That's the well, thing that confuses me. Well, that's the weirdness of these sleep paralysis events. No, it's really interesting. Really, really interesting. But yeah, that that bedroom has had a lot of weird things happen. Like something happened to my brother and something happened to my girlfriend recently, which she didn't tell me about until, until I contacted you and I told her I was going to talk to you. And she's like, Oh, did, did I, do you not remember, remember me talking to you about this incident that happened? I'm like, no, not at all. And it's a really weird one. Well, wow. right my place brother for is that. very strange too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you want to hear this now, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, if we're talking about that room, we might as well. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, before I go in, in the, my brother's incident and my girlfriend's incident, incident uh, one time I was laying on the bed in the same room and my arm is overhanging the bed between the headboard and the mattress. Mm-hmm. And, and this was, it was like, I saw the light on my room and it was before I was going to bed, I was just laying there just relaxing. And then something pulled my arm down, pulled mm-hmm. it down and held it there. Like it, it, it physically moved my body. 
and I got up and I was like, my other, I'm like, this is my other brother playing a joke on me. Uh, I mean, there's, there's no way. I got up, immediately looked on the bed, nothing. And I'm thinking, I'm awake. It's the lights on. Like, I don't know what's going on here, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah, and that's. I had, I had stuff like that happen to me all the time in that room. It was just a weird room. And then my brother, Kevin, he was spending a night in there. And he was, so he said, okay, for some reason, when, when you're laying in that bed, something makes your eyes look to the top corner above where a closet was. For some reason, that's where I also saw the, that's where that thing came from, that moth thing, uh, thing. That's where I saw the shadow figures all the time. That's where he saw shadow figures. And then it would, your eyes would be drawn to that. Like no matter where, where the bed was in the room, like it was always drawn to that corner. And he said that he got up one day, he, something was telling him to look out the window. And this is what I experienced. Something told him to look out the window. He got up, went over, looked out the window, and then he saw this giant bat looking thing. He said it was, he said, it was, he said it was a bat. I'm like, you sure it wasn't like a, sure it wasn't like a big bird or something like that, you know? He said, no, a giant bat that flew over top of the window and landed on a peak above me. He heard it land on the, on the roof. Wow. And I don't know what to, I don't know what to think about that, but he never, he never told me this. And I thought he, like, he never told me this until I contacted you. And I was like, oh yeah. So it's the same thing. Like so in all these stories, it's, it's not like I knew his story beforehand. I knew my girlfriend's story. Like they told me after I contacted you, which is, like all these coincidences are starting to add up, you know? Yeah, no, it's very interesting. Very interesting. So he just saw that bat thing once. Yeah, he said one time. Did he say and about how big it he, was? Like, uh, He was saying two two to three feet wide. Hmm. Which is, yeah, I mean, there's, you know, there's, uh, I'm like, you sure it was an owl? Because that be, would fit an owl range, you know? He said no. He said it was a bat. Like it looked like a bat. Wow. And, and yeah. That, and like... The- the large brown bat can get a wingspan of up to about 14 inches, but uh, that, okay. I, think, I think that's the biggest bat we have in Pennsylvania. So yeah, two feet is, is quite a bit larger than that. Yeah. There, there's been a few times where, well, more than a few times, I would say my, my late teens, early twenties is when I was really seeing, I was seeing something standing out by the, so the road is about 50 yards, maybe like, 60 yards from my window and something always told me to look outside. So I would look outside middle of the night. I would just get up and look out the window and, and I would always see this black figure standing down there, not standing, but sitting. And I know, I know, I know how you are with black dog things, but I'm pretty sure this is a black dog or something that used to sit down there because we used to have a trash can and the trash can would sit right next to the road and, and the road was right there and it was a big tree and just to the left of the big tree, a big pine tree would it sit the trash can and then, I used to see this figure and I'm pretty sure it was a black dog. It was some kind of, some kind of something sitting there. And, and I'm like, maybe coyote. I was thinking like, am I seeing coyotes? Am I seeing neighbor, neighbor's dogs are getting into the trash cans? Like, I don't know what I'm seeing. It happened more than once. It happened a handful of times. And I, I don't know what to think about it. I don't know. It, it, the fact that it would, like something made me look out this window. I would get up and I would just have to look out. And there was something sitting there. It was always too dark. I could never get detail from it. Like I could right. see something sitting there. You know, and I'm, I always thought, like, gotta be like neighbor's dog, or I, I mean, I think I had a dog back then that, but it would have been our dog. Like, it, it was just something that would sit there. And, and I would see it, and I would just, get, I would get back, go back to bed. Like, it was like a, just a date, not a daily thing, but it was like a normal thing for me. But yeah, and then my girlfriend, I think it was, I wanna say it was in May or June of this year. It, it was sometime in like summertime or early summer, but there was a big, a big storm and we were we were sleeping in my my room and uh she said that i was struggling it was too hot to sleep in there and so i went downstairs and slept which i did i went and slept on the couch and then she stayed up there in the room and, and it was just storming all night it was rain thunder lightning everything and she doesn't like being by herself in storms and everything but like i couldn't sleep it was too hot there so she she claims that she wakes up or well she says she's sleeping but she's dreaming she has a dream that there's something standing down by the road. And this is the same spot that I used to look at that I would get drawn to the, the same spot. She, she looks at the window and she sees, this is weird. It sounds really weird, but she sees something in a black cloak with long black, like, like hair flowing out of its like cloak with a white mask on. Wow. And, and I'm like, what do you mean? Like, and she's like, I had a white mask, like, like a white face like mask she said mask 
Mm-hmm. And then it had the, the hair coming out the side of the mask and it had like a cloak on it, like a cloak. And she said it was across the road. So about 15 feet wide, you could see this black figure, the, the black dog thing. And she said that was across the road. And I'm like, well, what would it, it do? She's like, it was just staying there. And I'm like, well, it, like, how could you see it though? Because she said it was dark, but the thunder and lightning, she could see it every time the lightning flashed. Oh, wow. So then she said, she claims that she goes, to, she falls asleep again. So she walks over, falls asleep again. Or, or I mean, the whole time she claims she's sleeping, or she's sleeping, she's dreaming this. But then she said she wakes up again, and like in her dream, walks over, looks out the window, and it moved 20 feet farther up towards the house. So now it's standing where I used to see that figure at. I'm like, so are you, are you dreaming this? Or are you, like, are you awake? And she says, well, I, I think I'm dreaming. But, but every time, but she said she falls asleep again. And then every time, so this happened four times. She said every time she woke up or, or she started dreaming again, this thing was closer to the house. And, and she never saw it walking or moving, but every time she looked out the window, it was closer to the actual house, like to the window. Oh, that's so creepy. And it's just super creepy. <laughs> and she claims that she told me this all happened in the morning. And I don't remember any of this. Like she didn't, I don't, like she, she claims she told me, she's like, yeah, then you, you told me like exactly what it was, what you thought it was. And, and I'm like, I don't remember this, you know, like, right. I, I asked her like, do, it's like, do you think you were dreaming or were you, I mean, did this happen? <laughs> like, were you, were you not dreaming? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's a weird series of dreams to have, if, you know, if it was a dream, I mean, not impossible. Yeah. Cause it just would be strange to keep going back to she, sleep and reentering the same place. Yeah. Cause, cause she claims it happened four times. Mm-hmm. And every time it was closer and closer. And, and she did say that it didn't move, but she saw the wind like swaying the, the cloak or whatever she thought it was. She said she saw that moving. So something was moving, but it wasn't the thing. It was like the thing it was wearing. Wow. Or, or it, you know, like the hair and like the cloak. Did it get close enough at any point where she could discern more details, details of the mask or, or anything? She did say the eyes had like a, like a redness to it. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't know if she, she claims that it's a glow or, but they were red. She said she saw they were red. I'm like, were they, were they self illuminating or were they like when, when the, the lightning struck with, did they make it red or was it always red? And she, she just said they're red. So that's hmm. really the only detail. Cause at the, the last part of her dream, the last time she saw it, it must've been 30 feet away from the window, like not far at all. And the second story window. So, yeah. You yeah, wonder that's, if that's, that's, you would have seen it you know, separate from her, if it would have been a black dog and whatever she perceives is, is this thing. I don't, you know, I don't know. I'm just wondering if that would be the case. Yeah. I mean, the thing that it's, it's just, it's, it's too much of a coincidence that my brother, myself, my girlfriend were all drawn to this window and drawn to this spot, specific spot outside. Right. It's just, I, I don't get, I don't get why we're all drawn to that. We also, we also have different things. Mm-hmm. I, I spent the most time in that room, so I saw this black dog thing a you know, handful of times. But my brother, he, you know, he, he had a room next to me, so he wasn't in this room that much. And my girlfriend, she was only in that room a few times when we were visiting my parents. So uh, the fact that she saw that, it, and I wasn't in the room, I was downstairs. So I don't know if that has something to do with it. I mean, yeah, it, no, it just it's... freaks me out that we all had, we all looked out the window, and we're all looking at this spot, and we see something different. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Each person really see something, but they see something different. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Did any other weirdness happen in this house? Uh, yeah. So my parents claimed that they had um, experience with uh, hearing and feeling cats walking in the house. like that. Because we used to have four cats growing up. We had two older cats and two newer ones. And uh, it was around, let's see, when I was 18 to 20 something like early twenties. Um, we had four cats and two of the cats got killed by Cody coyotes. We believe because we had to find their bodies around the property. And the other two just, they, they weren't fixed or anything. So they just wandered off and never came back. So then my parents were like, well, there's no cats around, you know, but they would hear like we're all off to college. My other, my brothers and I, so when there was no one home except my parents and they would hear, they would hear things walking up and downstairs, like when cats run downstairs to make that, you know, just a little scurry noise. And uh, they would hear that periodically. But then one, one night they claimed that they were laying there and they were sleeping. It was dark. And they claimed that something jumps on the bed and walks between them like a, like a cat would. And then it lays between them and they, they feel the blankets, you know, sink down next to them. They feel something 
crawl between them and lay down. <laughs> so that's pretty strange. I don't know. I don't know what to think about that. But they both experienced it. They both experienced it. And they both claimed it. Yeah, they, they told us. Like, they both backed up and like, yeah, like this is what we felt. Uh, we felt this before, you know. Oh, wow. So I don't know what to think about that. <laughs> I never experienced that, though. I never heard anything. I never felt, never heard any cats walking around. I mean, never, none of that. So I don't know. So everything you experienced was in the one room. Yeah, everything I experienced in the house was in the one room. Mm-hmm. I, I never experienced anything else outside that room. So I don't, and, and no one else except, well, my parents, they felt that in a different room. But, but my brother and my girlfriend felt everything in this room. And my brother had a room right next to me, my twin brother, and he never felt anything. He never experienced anything in that room. But when he went to my room, that's when he experienced things. So, Did your brother ever experience sleep paralysis that you know of, separate from these events? Just uh, no, just, just the times where he saw like shadow figures. So he, he said he just saw shadow figures and he wasn't paralyzed with fear. He wasn't nothing like that. Just He just saw these things on the wall and you know it freaked him out. But he never, he claims he never had any sleep paralysis experience. So mm-hmm. the shadow figures but, he was seeing same house or does he, does yeah, he same see... house, same, same bedroom. Uh, okay. All right. Hmm. But no sleep paralysis. Interesting. No. Yeah. No. You, you just wonder if this is the different people's experience of the same thing. You know what I mean? And like how yeah. one person perceives it differing from another. It's very, very interesting that everyone's experiences are kind of similar, but different. Yeah. I wonder if he would have spent more time in that bedroom, if he would have had any more experiences. Yeah. I, 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 I wonder. Yeah. Cause, cause like, yeah. So that's cause he had nothing else happen to him in the other room next to him. Mm-hmm. So I, yeah, I don't know. Cause I spent the most time in the room that had all weird things happen to him, you know? Yeah. At some point I'd have been like, Hey, let's switch rooms for a while. Uh, yeah, I should have. Because <laughs> a lot of nights, I actually, a lot of nights, I just couldn't sleep in that room. I just felt like there was something, I felt like there was something not watching me, but like, I felt like there was something in there. Because like I said, my eyes were always drawn to that one spot. Right. And, and my girlfriend, I, I forgot to mention, when she had her experience, her nightmares or whatever it was, that thing, she said that every single time she felt like something was watching her, there was something in her. And so she was like staring at the wall. And the wall was like a foot a foot from. She was afraid to look back. Cause she thought she thought something was staring at her in there. Mm. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if, if that was happening and then she would fall asleep and then she would dream about this thing she was seeing. But she, she did mention that she thought something was like watching her. That she right. was not looking behind her. She was looking towards the wall that the bed was against. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Something seems to be going on there. It's very interesting. Yeah. You want to talk about the white rocks thing? Yeah. So what happened at white rocks Keith? So this is about back in November. So it wasn't that long ago. Um, I was coming back from a trip from Atlantic City with my brother. And uh, I decided to meet up my, with my friend who lives pretty close to White Rocks Trail, probably 10 minutes. And he's a big uh, mushroom hunter, forager. So we're like, hey, let's go for some mushrooms. You know, it's, it's, they're still out there. There's, you know, we're going to do some searching. And, um, but it's getting late. Like we get out there and we only have about an hour daylight. So like, whatever, we're going to hike in. We're going to hike in. We're going to go up the top uh, by the rocks, the ridge, and, you know, put up a hammock and just hang out for a little bit. Because, you know, it was, it was like 50 degrees. It wasn't too – it was pretty warm for that time that time of year. Mm-hmm. And uh, after hanging out for about like 30 minutes, took some good photos and stuff, and it gets windy. It's, I mean, it was windy, like really windy up top by the rocks. Down below, it was calm. So we got in there, like, oh, this is really nice, beautiful. Get up there, super windy. <laughs> and which I didn't find that weird because it's a higher in elevation. So right, yeah. Top of the ridge, you know. Yeah. And uh, it was dark by the time we left that place. Didn't have any headlights because we weren't expecting to be out there that late. So we, we get our cell phone lights. We're walking down. So if you're walking back down the trail, uh, the wind was coming from the right, which would be the opposite side of the ridge. Like okay. the side that's in the opposite side of the parking lot. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not super familiar with the, with the layout, but so yeah, it was coming from the other way towards the parking area, I guess. And okay. It's dark at this point, and uh, we hear like we're walking, and we're just about to dip down the steep section that brings you down to the cars, but it's we're still on the ridge with all the big rocks, and we hear these like we hear these screams. He's like I I I said it was like a female shriek, and then it was two in a row. There was one, and maybe five seconds later there was another one, 
and we stopped dead. And my friend who's in the back, he's, um, he's like the 20 yards behind us, whatever, uh, my brother and I, mm-hmm. he says he didn't hear it. And he, I'm like, did you hear that? Did you hear that? He's like, did I hear what? I'm like, did you hear that? Like scream, like that shriek, like that, like somebody yelling or something yelling. And he's like, no, no. So we hang out for another few minutes and we hear another one. And he immediately, he was like, oh, that's a coyote. That's a coyote. I'm like, no, that's not a coyote. Like I, I've heard coyotes before. I mean, I, I live where I grew up at. There was a million coyotes running around. You hear them all the time. Mm-hmm. It was not a yip. It wasn't a yell. It was a screech, like a, like a scream, like a screech. Wow. And, and I thought that, I thought it was strange because the wind was so strong. I mean, all you heard was wind. And then the fact that we heard a scream, that was crazy. We're like, what was that? <laughs> I mean, we didn't have any flashlights. All we could see was our phones, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and, and we, I, we probably hung out there for five minutes and we heard it. The, the two initial screams, and then the one a few minutes later, and it came from the, the same area, which was down the other side of the ridge. But I couldn't tell how far it was because the wind was the wind might have carried it farther than you know, like the wind might have carried it uphill and it might have been in the bottom. I don't know. Right. But that was really strange. <laughs> so it came from the direction, like the opposite direction from the parking lot. Then, if you're on the ridge. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Like if you start the parking lot, you walk up and then you walk the ridge. And mm-hmm. then there's a nice little area of you can put like hammock and there's if people climb back there. But then mm-hmm. when you're, when you're coming back down. Yeah. So it came from the opposite, opposite side of the ridge. Okay. Yeah. So that's over towards camp Tuckahoe. Very interesting. That's uh Chad and I are, we need to get in that Valley. We've been saying we want to penetrate through that Valley there and see what we can see. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. Well, with the one though, with uh, Chad and his, when his, Chad and his buddy were, went there, they went down into the Valley. Correct. No, they went up to the ridge and they followed the ridge up to the AT, turned around and came back across the ridge, and that's when they got screamed at. Oh, uh, okay, okay. So, yeah, yeah, I thought they went down. I thought they went down to where the, the screams were coming from, where I thought they were coming from. No, okay. Chad's uh, yeah, been cause... down in that valley before, but he said he basically just popped up like from one one mountain to the other. He didn't really get down in there and explore much. So we uh, we're uh okay, okay, pop down in there and really poke around. Um, I don't remember what kind of scream did he hear. He heard like a roar, like a extremely loud, like roar kind of thing. He, he said it was like a roar. Okay. Yeah, v- very low, very loud. And uh, yeah, he, you know, by the second time he heard it, he said he got the feeling that it was telling him get out. You know, get out or you're going to get hurt. So he split. Yeah. Um. What kind of weather was it? Was it? decent for him i can't remember it's been a while since i listened to the show yeah i think it was if i remember correctly it was it was a pretty warm spring day if i remember what he told me and i might i might have that wrong as far as the wind and stuff i'll have to ask him because because i don't you know i don't really remember but uh yeah man coming down that with just cell phone lights that that was a challenge and a half i did that a night hike up there on uh the solstice and uh that was it was quite challenging with uh even with headlamps and and i have a light attached to my walking stick yeah nice yeah i mean i, I do enough backpacking where i always have a headlamp always and, and i i do not hike all the time i mean i've hiked in all over the country everywhere and like so i'm used to hiking in rocky terrain and you know in, in rough areas and so um so it wasn't a problem for us but the fact that we just had cell phones wasn't the I, most ideal you know <laughs> yeah yeah, I, I found it a challenge coming back down just at night because, you know, we just had yeah. very little light. No, that's really super interesting. Really, really interesting. I'm, I'm excited to share the story with Chad. He'll be, he'll be uh, super psyched to hear it. Uh, yeah, my friend, he, he grew up there. I mean, he lived you know, not even 10 minutes away. And I asked him, like, did you ever have any weird experiences here? Because he goes, that's like his spot. He goes there all the time, mm-hmm. all the time. And I'm like, have you ever experienced anything? He's like, no, never. And, I mean, he, he's been there for 20 years at least. Right. So that, that, I thought I thought that was strange. I'm like, and I didn't. I don't think I heard. I don't think I heard Chad's story before that. I'm pretty sure. So like, I don't, you know, what I'm saying that I thought that was strange. Yeah. And maybe it did. I don't know because that that was the se- was that second time I was there. Yeah, that was the second time I was there. So I was there before that, and I had nothing happen to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, we've been there a few times with nothing. Uh, the night yeah. of the solstice, we we got up top, heading up to the AT, and and. Uh, right at midnight, we look down into that valley, the same valley, but this is up closer to where it meets the AT, and there's lights mm-hmm. in there. 
and it's like what is that just really dim yeah kind of lights that uh and actually i saw two side by side red lights that that looked like eyes i'm not saying that's what they were but that's what what was down in there two side by side red lights it was bizarre and uh, after it was a very nice like peaceful hike until about that moment and then i was just like oh man because i realized we're i don't know you're what over a mile away from the parking area up on top of that ridge yeah. and it's slow going like if we if we need mm-hmm. to get out of there quick at least with me that's not going to be quick and i got to pick my way through that stuff so that freaked me out a little bit but it, no harm came to us it was okay but it was weird that's to see, see lights down in there because there's nothing down in there in that valley i wonder like what, what's the nearest house to that area because when you're up there you can see light from the distance but mm-hmm. I, I, I don't really know the area that well, so I don't really know how far on a trail you can go without seeing a house. Yeah, it depends how far, what direction you're looking in, basically. You know, down in that, that valley we're talking about, I don't think there's anything down in there. But if you can look around and you can see different towns from the area. In fact, I thought I was seeing weird lights like up on the AT, but I was actually seeing there's a town beyond that. You know, I was kind of seeing lights. I'm, I forget which town yeah. it is. I'd have to look at a map. And we did see, now it was like eight degrees or something that night when we were doing that hike. Well, it was, okay. that's, that's it was cold. cold, but we saw what yeah. additional lights on the AT, which had to be headlamps. They had to be, you know, human. These were much brighter, much more distinct and much more people looking lights. You know, they just looked like man-made stuff and uh, they didn't act weird or blink out or anything. Or they were, but they was, they was appear to be on the AT, which I just thought was weird. I'm like, well, who else is up here in this weather? Yeah, when, especially when it's eight degrees, yeah. Yeah, but uh, they didn't come closer. They must have been sitting wherever they were, you know, because those lights didn't come closer and didn't look to be moving around or anything. But they definitely looked man-made. So we assumed that that was yeah. just people, you know, hanging out on the AT for whatever reason. We couldn't see a fire either, so I don't know how they were keeping warm in that weather. That's you know? true, yeah. Because uh, I, I enjoy doing night hikes. and like I'm looking for cold weather right now, actually, like cold snowy weather to do some hiking, to do some camping. And mm-hmm. uh, I never see anybody out there like this time of year. Like I go in February all the time. No one. Yeah. Me. <laughs> well, my I'm brother and I usually, but much prefer winter hikes, but yeah, it's, you, you rarely see people. It's just, uh, yeah. And, and especially like I said, at midnight on the winter solstice out there and, you know, eight degree weather. But, uh, yeah. anyway, no, that was a really cool story. Very, very cool. Keith. Thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. Uh, I'm actually, I think I actually might be going there next Wednesday. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that. really? Sweet. Cause, uh, yeah, um, I'm I'm actually going to Atlantic City for a few days with my brother and my aunt for my like, birthday type thing. So, um, yeah, I, I actually, I'm gonna call my friend and see if he wants to go out because if he's around, I definitely want to go back there. Yeah, yeah, it's but, it's. But a, it might be later. It might it might be later on Wednesday night. So I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can do that, uh, that much hiking, but I would like to go back up there and just hang out for a few hours. Mm-hmm. Well, let us know if you see anything. Yeah, I will. Yeah, um, I have a couple of stories about some weird screams my family has heard up north uh and then i have uh, a couple stories about my camp some weird things that happened there up north all right okay so this one happened in ridgeway which is part of the pa wilds up north my uncle's fiance and my cousin's son who's two and a half or three years old i can't remember this happened i think it happened last year so i just found out about this a few months ago like so they were out there uh, fishing, like they were fishing and, and doing stuff, you know, springtime stuff, April, May. And they had a camper parked up there. Like, I guess they have a property, they bring their camper a lot. They do a lot of fishing and stuff there. So they're outside, it's nine in the morning and they're yelling in the woods, making echoes. Like, cause my little cousin, I don't want to say his name, but my little cousin, he's yelling, yelling, he's trying to make echoes. But mm-hmm. then my uncle's fiance is yelling too and they're just having fun. It's early in the morning. There's no one around. And then they hear two loud screams, like loud, like roars. And they said it was no human. It was no hunter, no fisherman. It was something that that just completely filled the woods with noise. It was a roar, they said. Mm. And, and, and it, it scared them so bad, they, they both ran back into campers. They would not leave. <laughs> and yeah. I'm like, well, I, I mean... There's no one else up there. I mean, it's, it's that's what they said. Like they know who who who's usually there, and there's no one there. Yeah, those and roars then, may freak people out when they hear them, whatever they are. Mm-hmm. Another incident happened in the same area. 
So my my cousin and uh, my good friend, they were going coyote hunting. And I guess they do this a lot there. But I, I'm not really, I don't really coyote hunt. So like, I don't know how it works, but I guess you bring, you bring like a red light or something. So like they, they, they can't see your light. I don't know how it works. But mm-hmm. so they go there, they're, they're walking out there and they're coyote hunting. And, I, and apparently if nothing calls back in 10 minutes or 15 minutes, then there's nothing around. But they had the wounded rabbit scream or whatever they're playing. So nothing, nothing calls, nothing, nothing's coming in. So they said, let's go back to camp. Like there's nothing out here. I think it was a 15 minute walk back. So as they're walking, they hear something bipedal following them. We're not following them, but it's walking alongside them. And pacing them, yeah. And they say it's it, pacing them. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for, pacing them. And they don't know what it is. They say it's loud enough to where it's, it's not a deer. It could be a bear, but it's, every time they stop, it stops. Mm-hmm. And they say it's loud enough it's, it's, that they think it's close, but they can't see it. And, and this happened for the whole way back, 15 minutes to the truck or whatever they had. And they were freaked out. They said this thing was pacing them. It was loud. It sounded bipedal. They don't think it was a coyote. They don't think it was a bear. They don't think it was a deer. And they, they don't know what it was, but it scared them really bad. And they're both experienced outdoorsmen. So I don't know. I don't know what they, what they saw, but that's kind of freaky. And that's in yeah. the same area that they heard, they heard the roar around, around the same time of year, I think, too. Oh, really? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. When I talked to them about it, like, they didn't even really want to talk about it because uh, I think we're, we're sitting around a fire and they were like, they're telling us some, some stories and they, they told us this, but they were really, they didn't really want to talk about it because they, they were that afraid of it, whatever it was. Wow. Which is, which is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Because I know, yeah. I know the, how they're, they're, they're outdoorsmen and they, they hunt, they hunt all the time, they fish all the time. I mean, I know they're not afraid of the woods. And, and they were freaked out about it. Yeah, I definitely run into that before. And sometimes I wonder if it's not, you know, people who enjoy the outdoors so much that they don't want to talk about it because they don't want to be confronted with this idea that, like, whatever's out there, you know, something's out there, whatever it was. Let's let's say, you know, we don't know what it was, but whatever it was yeah. was enough to freak them out, you know. And uh yeah. I've, I've met a lot of hunters and stuff and, and that's kind of the impression I get. It's, it's not so much that they don't want to tell the story. It's that they don't want to acknowledge it because they don't want anything to sort of ruin their experience out there. They enjoy it so much. I think that is part of it. Yeah. Cause if they think that this is what it was, they don't want to like, well, I don't want to be out there because I know there's something, there's something out there. You no, know? yeah. I, mean, yeah. you know, I know them. It's not going to deter them. It's not going to deter them away from doing the things they want, but it definitely freaked them out. That's, mm-hmm. that's for sure. Because when I'm talking, I can tell that there's fear in their voice that something happened to them and they can't explain. It. Right. And I think that the fact that they can't explain is also why they don't want to talk about it. Because mm-hmm. they don't want to sound like they're crazy. Yeah, that can be definitely. But I mean, it, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. The stuff that happened on my camp, it, it's funny because my parents, they bought the camp a few years ago. And it's, it's directly in the middle of Allegheny before us. So we're, I mean, we're out there, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and right directly behind the camp is, is national forest. So you, you could walk back a few miles and then not see the road, but they claim, and they don't believe in like, they don't believe in Bigfoot and all that stuff, but I think they're open to the idea of something out there, but they claim that they heard wood knocks. The first day they were, this is the first day they went and saw the cabin if they bought it. They hear wood knocks up in the hillside. And they said, it, it sounded like somebody was hitting a tree with, with wood, but it wasn't like an accident in the wood. So like wood on wood. Mm-hmm. And with, I'm like, well, the timber company owns, uh, they own trees up there and they, they go up there every five years and they cut trees down, but and they're using chainsaws. And, and they said there was no one, there was no tracks. There was no one up there. The gate was closed. So I don't know. They, they were freaked out about it. And I thought that was pretty interesting because it was the first day that they went up and like basically moved into the cabin. So it was my, my parents and my, one of my older brothers that went there and they didn't know what it was. <laughs> that Welcome was a little, to the forest. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's that's all I was thinking. Like something was telling them, "Hey, we're here," you know. Yeah, like, we're up here in that in that area where they heard wood knocks. I and mean, we we have truck hands. We heard I mean, we we see every animal in the forest. Some bobcats, fishers. The fishers are hard to come by. Bear, turkeys. I mean, everything. <laughs> so like, I know there's some weird animals up there. <laughs> <laughs> but the same uh, cabin, my mom and I were out trying to get star photos, and there's a field next to us, and. That area is super dark, so like you can see Milky Way any time of the year. So we're like, all right, we're gonna get some star shots, and she's trying to learn photography. So we're out there. It's around between 11:30 midnight, but 
the, the clouds were rolling in and out, but it was mainly clear, but we couldn't get a good shot. It was just a few clouds in, in the distance. So we're sitting there, the camera's uh, pointing up in the air. We have all the lights off so we can see better. I look down, I'm, I'm changing the shutter or something on the camera. And then I click it, look up, and, and the sky is completely covered in clouds. And in two seconds, like, I would say five seconds earlier, there was nothing in the sky. It's crystal clear. So that's, I was waiting for the sky to clear and clear. Click the shutter, look up, and there's, it's completely full clouds. <laughs> hmm. So my mom's like, did you just, did you notice that? I'm like, yeah, like, there was it, the entire sky full of stars. Five seconds ago, we both looked down, clicked the button, look up, completely covering clouds. So I don't know if that's like meteorological or what, but that, I thought that was pretty strange. She was freaked out about it. You don't have any weird stuff with uh, <laughs> getting back to camp later than you thought or anything that night, do you? What do you mean? Like missing time. That's what I'm getting at. You don't have uh, any... No, I, no, I don't think so. Okay. No, because like, uh, we, we went to we camp and my dad already, he went to bed. See, all the lights were off. And it, it, we just saw it was strange that we looked down and looked back up and it was completely, I mean, it was completely all clouds. And it was mm-hmm. stars. Not even five seconds before that. So, I mean, there could have been missing time. I don't, I don't remember lo- checking. I don't remember looking at the phone. I don't remember looking at a clock when I went inside the cabin. But we just thought it was super strange. Because I know that area. I mean, the clouds can roll in quick, but not that quick. And it, it's a big field. So it's right. not like we have trees 20 feet in size. I mean, it's a 200-yard wide field up and down. So, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Strange. But that general area is just strange anyway. It's just dark and weird. Like the whole forest. I've heard a lot of pretty uh weird and interesting stories from allegheny for sure yeah and, and all the people i know live up there they have some weird stories mm-hmm. like just just weird wood stories you know, you know how it is yeah exactly this, this happened in montana we were, kevin and i were hiking my brother we're hiking up to this uh this creek called big creek lake it's in montana it's in a wilderness area mm-hmm. and we, we well this is the first thing so we find a couple of tracks we find one track on a trail probably 13 14 inches i mean it wasn't huge but it was in a mud on trail single track and then we find another track by our campsite maybe 200 yards away and, and it's behind this one it's behind a bush and it's a huge track it's weird it's like an indent in the, in the dirt but we don't quite think it's you know a, exactly footprint but it looks like a footprint so then fast forward another year and my girlfriend is with us this time we are in the same spot camping in the same spot it's midday some lady comes up behind us and she she's like hey she scares us we're we're like sitting by the lake she scares us she says hey is it okay if i can't back to you guys i've been walking all day and i'm by myself and i don't want to continue on a trail and, and not be able to find a spot and she sounded kind of anxious she was in her like early 60s we're like yeah it's fine and so you know she, she gets her tent set up and this is like three four o'clock in the afternoon well we don't see her the rest of the night and we're we're thinking where did this lady go? Well, it's around midnight. We're taking star photos and we hear something in the water. There's a little creek that flows into the lake and it's 40 yards away from us. So it's not too far away. We hear something walking in the water. We're like, what is this? So we, sh- we shine a light to it. Don't see anything. It just happened for five, 10 minutes. Nothing. So we're like, okay, whatever. It's nothing. We're sitting by the fire, all three of us. My girlfriend and I go back in the tent. We're like, it's getting late. We're going to bed. My brother Kevin is out by the fire still, and I must not have been in the tent for more than two minutes. We hear and feel the ground shake next to us, like something is running or walking outside the tent. And we feel it, and we hear it, and, Ke- and Kevin's like, did you guys feel that? And do you hear it? And we're like, yes, he felt it on the ground. And he's like, what was that? And like, something just ran by the tent. And he had a fire gun and everything, didn't see it. So <laughs> at this point, we're like, something must have crossed the creek, stood there for a while and then ran up next to our tent and just just ran off mm-hmm. and we're like it had it had across this lady's tent that was only 15 or 20 feet away from us it was very close to us she had a, she had a felt it had to run right next to her tent to get through there so we end up we end up following this thing we run over we see eyes so we see so we see something we see the eyes with our flashlights or with our uh, headlamps and then we see it's 20 30 yards away and all of a sudden disappears. So we, we follow the trail that's over there, see it again. And it's, I think it's five, six feet off the ground. I mean, that's, that's what I was guessing the eyes were, but there was brush and trees, everything in the way. Mm-hmm. And 
we get about 30 or 40 ways, 30 yards away from it each time. So we're close enough. We can see it with the headlamps, but not quite close enough to see it like any definition. And what is it? Are you getting eye shine off of it or you, can you actually see its eyes in the headlamp? <laughs> We're, we're just seeing, uh, we're seeing the, when we shine the light on it, we're just seeing the eyes, the eyes shine back. Mm-hmm. But we don't see any, like, the eyes aren't glowing besides when we shine the light on it. Right. But yeah. I estimated the eyes were six to eight inches wide, apart. So not, like, crazy far apart, but far enough, it, it could have been a deer or elk or something. But this thing, it, we see it three or four times, and it finally just takes off, gone. We hear it running away. And we're like, okay, what was that? No idea. Go back to camp, and... We're all contemplating what it was. They're saying they think it was a mountain lion. I'm like, maybe it was a moose, an elk. I mean, we couldn't tell. We didn't hear a snort, nothing like that. So I don't know what that was, but we, uh, the, the next morning, the lady's not there. Her tent's there. Didn't, didn't see her at all. We're there half a the day. Still didn't see this lady. No idea where she went. There was no sign of her making a fire, no sign of her leaving. We didn't hear her leave. We didn't see her. This lady was there for, I don't know, almost 24 hours. Didn't see her after we initially saw her. And this thing had her run right next to our tent, next to our tent. So I don't know what that was about. But So you never yeah, saw her again? I don't know. <laughs> never saw her again. Hmm. And this lady, I mean, she had, she had have heard this. I mean, we didn't, I don't think she even stayed in the tent. We didn't see her move at all. So this is so strange. I don't know what happened to her. We saw her one time. And she was, that's where she made a tent and then disappeared. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, so I don't know. That was, that was a weird story. We don't know what happened to her. But so when when you ever cleared out, her tent was still there then? Yeah, it was still there. <laughs> so there, I mean, we looked for tracks around it. Like, we didn't see tracks for her. We didn't see tracks for whatever that thing was we saw. I mean, I don't know, because they think if, if it was a mountain lion, we wouldn't even hurt it. You know, it was it was snuck by us. But, the, you know, the, the roots from the pine trees around us, the, you know, when you walk them, they vibrate. You can feel, you can feel a move. Mm-hmm. So whatever it was walking that, we felt the ground shake. We heard it. I mean, we heard just thump, 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 and we heard running. So we, we saw something, we found it, but we don't know what it was. And the fact that this lady wasn't there, it was just a creepy night, you know? Yeah, that's really weird. Super creepy. What color was the eye shine you were getting off of it? Green. They were green. Hmm. And like I said, I, I, I want to estimate the eyes were six to eight inches apart, but at that distance, it, it was hard to tell. But mm-hmm. I, so I think whatever it was, it was, a big, it was a big animal, but I couldn't tell... How, how tall was it? Couldn't tell if it was on four legs. It was hard to tell. But yeah, it was, it was a creepy night. Yeah. I'm actually a little concerned for that lady. I'm wondering if she ever got out of there. Yeah. Or if yeah, she was I mean, this something thing had, else. Yeah, it, it was strange. She, she walked up. She was winded, almost like, I've been hiking all day. I'm lost. But she didn't seem like she, like she was desperate, but she was like winded. Like, hey, like, you know, is it cool if I camp here? Mm-hmm. And it was mid afternoon. It's not like she ran out of time. She had plenty of daylight. It gets dark there at ten ten thirty. Right. So it, it was strange to us. Yeah, that's. Lady, a, I don't know. I don't. Weird. That's a weird night. Yeah, I mean, because the the thing the thing we saw. I mean, that wasn't as weird as what the lady is like. The whole lady thing. We just didn't know what happened to her. Mm-hmm. Never heard from her. So when it, that, that was a strange part for me. When it ran off finally after you guys kind of were getting close to it, did it sound like something running on two legs? I thought that it initially sounded like it was something with two legs, but but every time we we scared off to a different to like a farther position, it was just making too much noise in the brush. So I couldn't I couldn't exactly tell if it was on four or two legs. Mm-hmm. But initially, I thought it was something on two legs. It just had like a like a like a guy running next to you, like stomp 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 stomp. Like it felt like it was heavy thuds. Like it wasn't like a um like a deer running next to you. You know, it, it didn't sound like four legs. It sounded like something stomping. Once we kept tracking it, it was just it hit too much brush. We couldn't really couldn't really hear. You know, it was just uh, it was muffling the noise too much. Right. Yeah, I don't think that's a mountain lion. Maybe a bear. Bear can have green eye shine. I mean, if it's you know, if if we're looking for a natural explanation, maybe a bear. But uh, I don't. Yeah. Like you said, so, yeah, I don't, I I don't thinking, think you would have even heard that a mountain lion go by you unless it wanted you to hear it. Yeah, that's what I was telling my brother, and my girlfriend. I said I don't think it was a mountain lion because it would have been a lot more stealthy than that. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know if because whatever animal that we were following, it was. It wasn't just running away. It would stop and watch us. We watch it, and then it would move twenty or thirty yards deeper into the woods, and it would stop again. And so it was interested in us, but it wasn't aggressive. It wasn't. It didn't make any noises. So I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I guess it could be a bear because, mm-hmm. like, I don't think the eyes were any higher than five feet above the ground, four or five right. feet above the ground. Right. Unless it jumped on something, maybe a little taller, we couldn't tell. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, very, very strange though. Especially the yeah, I, I just thought it was a strange, strange thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so it's just a, a weird night when you put the uh, the old woman in the equation too. Very strange. It's not an easy hike to get to LA. It's a ten mile hike up, ten mile back. So I, I, I thought it was strange that she was in her early sixties and she was doing by herself. Mm-hmm. First of all, because that's it's, it's not it's not a good hike for anybody. It's, it's pretty difficult. A lot of a lot of uh, climbing, a lot of hiking. Isn't it strange though to be that far out in the wilderness and still run into people here and there? Yeah, like some of the places yeah, I mean, Chad and I go, where, where we we end up seeing a person out. You know, when we're out, you know, however many miles from nowhere, I'm like, wow, what are the, you know the chances that we're all here at once? Yeah, I, I've I've been a place in Montana where you get to bushwhack for three or four miles after you get to the farthest point where people stop, and, and, and you'll see somebody here and there, and you're like, how do you even how? Because right. I'm struggling to get here. I'm I'm in shape, and, and then I see you up here, and you're carrying a lot more than I am. Like, it's wild. So yeah, you're right. You do see people. You do see people farther out than you expect. Yeah, yeah. It's always a strange when you do too. I and mean, they're always surprised too. And they, if, you know, if they're close enough to see us, they're always like, "What?" <laughs> it's like, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I actually had a, uh, a I kind of with a wolf one time in Montana. I was camping next to a lake, and the lake called Elk Elk Lake, which lives up to the names. We see a lot of elk there, and uh. I was fishing nine in the morning and this, this wolf, young one was chasing, was swimming across the lake after a, a young elk. And, and I didn't know what it was at first. I thought it was, I saw like a white looking thing. And I was like, there's something following this elk. There's this woman, it was, you know, 10 feet behind the whole time. Like what is going on here? So once it gets on the land across the other side of the lake, which is a couple hundred yards long, it's pretty big. I see it's a wolf chasing an elk. <laughs> oh, wow. And I'm like, this is wild. I, I'm, I'm fishing on a little rock. I have a trout on the end of my line splashing in the water and I'm like, I'm trying to film this thing happening. And I'm like, this is crazy. I've never seen this happen before. So the elk eventually gets away after it swims across again. And the, the wolf has just got too tired and it ran on the shoreline and eventually saw me. I was probably like 70 yards away from it at this point. It saw me and it just trotted the way. So I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, no, that's, that's cool. You know, it's always amazing when you're out there and you get to see something that rare. You know, nature just gives you these scenes here and there. Yeah. Well, Keith, thanks so much for sharing your stories. You're welcome. So we were just talking to one of our friends about the possibility of adopting a dog. And one of the parts of the adoption was that you have to have a program in place. A training program. A training program. And I was like, oh, 90 days to the perfect puppy. <laughs> she was very excited to hear about it <laughs> yeah. as well. Where else can you do an online puppy training in this kind of... Yeah, it's great. 90 days to the perfect puppy is set up for that already. If you're getting a rescue and that's one of the requirements, there you go. Online training is perfect in this time where not everybody can get out mm-hmm. and go get in-person training. Adopting a dog can be one of the best decisions you'll make in your life, but it can be frustrating can leave you overwhelmed. 90 Days to the Perfect Puppy can help you with a relationship-based approach to training. They help you and your puppy become perfect for each other. They have online sources, video lessons, a secret Facebook group, one-on-one options. Find them at sithappens.us. Look for the 90 Days to the Perfect Puppy link at the top of the page. They'll teach you what to do, and they will also teach you what not to do. Again, you can find them at sithappens.us. Look for the 90 Days to the Perfect Puppy link at the top of the page. I'd like to thank our patrons who make Strange Familiars possible. Thank you very much, patrons. Last week we talked about the patron show we did in August that had all the extra content as regards to the cave and the surrounding area and the weirdness that surrounded it, including the headless woodchopper, which I'm counting as a flannel man account, an early flannel man account. They didn't say what he was dressed like, but he was a woodsman. He didn't know what he was dressed like. Because <laughs> he had no head. Yeah, basically. yeah. Thanks for the explanation. <laughs> Also, I don't know that I would trust him to chop the wood for, you know, like if we're in a, like a mutual campsite situation, I'll take over the chopping for You're the evening. Really yeah. <laughs> you rest a little bit. Mr. Headless Wood Mr. Chopper. Mr. Headless Wood Chopper. We do one full extra show a month for our patrons 
often we do more than one. There's been months where we've done three, I think. I think mm-hmm. one month we even did four. We're approaching 60 patron episodes now. So. so if you're into binge listening or you have some incredibly boring task you'd like to make less boring by list- binge listening. Yeah, you get almost 60 episodes the minute you sign up at Patreon. It's patreon.com slash strangefamiliars. Check out all the different options there from the basic level on up. There's all kinds of different levels there, and you can get rewards like t-shirts, stickers, and more. Patreon.com slash strangefamiliars. If you don't like the idea of a monthly subscription like Patreon, you can make a one-time donation as well. You can go to the show notes under any episode, look for the paypal.me link. You can click on that and make a one-time donation via PayPal. Everyone can help by sharing the show on social media, liking and subscribing wherever you're listening, and by leaving us those nice five-star reviews, which helps get the show in front of new potential listeners. So here we go into the photo of the week. I like this one. It's, it's got a lot going on. Yeah, we came upon this in a collection recently, and I snagged it and said, that's a Strange Familiars picture. It is a Strange Familiars picture. And it's a stereo view, which is the title of which is, They Love Darkness Rather Than Light. I know. It's what creepy. could that be? It's an owl. Do you know what kind of owl that is? No, I should have looked it up. Yeah, that would have been smart. I'm sure someone will identify it for us. But it's a really, really great picture. Now, is that hand tinted? It is because you can see there's a slight variation. Like if you look at the foliage, look how light that is there. And it's a little darker on this side. Yeah, that they're hand tinted. So someone was paid to do this. Yeah, actually, the, it happens with postcards of that era, too. That was kind of like a home business for women. You know, oh, like okay. To, you know, women don't have anything better to do than... You get paid by the piece. <laughs> Yeah, probably. Like, you probably ended one of those things where you probably ended up owing money at the end. Well, this is a really stunningly beautiful owl stereo view. I really, really like it. And if you have a stereo viewer, it really does have that three dimensional quality. Which we only got recently. Yeah, I know. We've I've been always... dealing in stereo views for a long time and, and uh, only recently got a stereo viewer. It is pretty good analog fun if you're just bored and you want to see like well i i really like like the exotic locations like where you can look inside a japanese temple or you can look inside a a field of rice somewhere or or see people in another another land from 100 years ago or you know i'm just really taken by this picture the colors are beautiful the owl is really really cool it's a really nice detailed photo if you go to the show notes under this episode You can see a photo of it. You can click on it. It'll take you to our Etsy shop where you can purchase this really, really cool stereo view. Do you have a guess what year that's from? Yeah, I can figure it out. (laughs) Oh, wait. It's got a copyright on it. Late 1890s, maybe? It is copyright 1899. Yeah, that would be late 1890s. (laughs) That is is the late 1890s. So there you go. Uh, 1899 stereo view of an owl. Check it out at strangefamiliars.com under this episode. Also in our Etsy store is the artwork for this episode. I particularly, this is a really nice one. I was really kind of inspired by the glowing moth story. And as I'm editing, I'm thinking about this story and I'm, I'm thinking about what am I going to use for the, for the show art? And you know, I have like a million Bigfoot drawings. And you actually have quite a few moths you've done in the past. You've done scratchboard moths. I have. I've, I've, I've always yeah. loved moths, but I'm, I was like, I could have easily just thrown a Bigfoot drawing out for this, yeah. the episode artwork. But something about this glowing mall story, so I, I, I feel like I have to draw that. So I went to it and uh, came up with that image for this episode. So you can buy the original art for that at our Etsy store. Lots of other original art there. Pieces from my books. I haven't put anything from Where the Footprints End up yet, but those are coming soon. Okay. So people should keep an eye out for that. I think most of the artwork from Don't Look Behind You is gone, except the little pieces. Mm -hmm. A a lot of the little spot spot illustrations are still there. Uh, There there might be a couple of the bigger illustrations from that book I haven't put up yet. But the Where the Footprints End art is coming soon. The cover's already sold. The cover's already gone. But the frontispiece and the spot illustrations for Where the Footprints End I will put up soon. Speaking of which... I think I typed my last word for volume two of Where the Footprints End. Now, people shouldn't is it get... end? Is it the end? <laughs> <laughs> is the end. 
people shouldn't get too excited because we still need to do second drafts and I need to do the entire layout for the book and I'm still working on the artwork for volume two. Which and I'm, theoretically someone should edit it. Yes, <laughs> editing as well. I am having a blast doing the artwork. I'm super excited about this book. So still a little ways off, but I'll say at this point, we are on schedule for our proposed date of getting it out by Christmas of this year. Mm -hmm. If it can be out sooner, we'll drop it sooner. A lot of work to do yet, but it was very, very nice to sort of be, feel like I was finished the writing, just kind of come to an end mm -hmm. with that. And I do have my book following that planned out. I was hit by a lightning bolt of inspiration. Were you actually hit by a lightning bolt and you just don't want to tell me? <laughs> no, no. Uh, you know, I had planned on doing something else, actually. And then okay. this often happens where something just really, really moves me. And I say, and I think, well, no, I have to write that. I'm not ready to announce it yet. It has to do with Pennsylvania folklore. That's as much as I'm going to say right now. And uh, hopefully it will be heavily illustrated by yours truly. That is my goal. So we'll see what happens on that one and, and how quickly I can hammer that one out. But got to finish the artwork for Where the Footprints End, Volume 2 first. I think that's all the news we have. So thanks for listening, everybody. We'll be back soon with another episode of Strange Familiars. Strange Familiars is a production of Dark Holler Arts, music, books, art, podcasts, and more, darkhollerarts.com. Intro and background music is by Stone Breath. Go to stonebreath.bandcamp.com for more. We're on Facebook, which the children say makes us old. <laughs> Facebook. <It does. laughs> Facebook.com slash Strange Familiars, where you can join the Strange Familiars Gathering Group. And we are on Instagram, which I think makes us young. I think that just makes us Gen X. <laughs> <laughs> At Strange Familiars on Instagram. Take a Duncan Sin Fry, my thoughts freely flower. Take a Duncan Sin Fry, my thoughts give me power. No scholar can map them, no hunter can trap them. Man can deny me a Duncan Sin Fry. No man can deny me a Duncan Sin Fry. I think as I please, and this gives me pleasure. My conscience decrees this right I must treasure. My thoughts will not cater. Duncan's in front.